welcome once again uh, dear friends for the module on strategic trade and uh, protectionism theories and empirics as a part of NPTEL course. Uh, in the fourth lecture now, this is the fourth lecture where we are supposed to understand uh, facts. Uh, these two lectures are actually dedicated for facts figures. So, uh, this particular lecture is targeted for understanding trade policies related facts and facilitations. Uh, the previous lecture was purely on uh, direction and sources of trade uh, to understand uh, what kind of dependence on which country we have and how the member countries can able to tap the benefit especially for India. Now, we are targeting for policy related segment and how policies are actually oriented towards facilitating trade. In this context, uh, I am uh, Dr. Pratap Si Mohanty as a faculty member uh, in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Humanities uh, Department in IIT Roorkee, uh, you know get the privilege to explain the latest policies on it. And this is the one I have given the module to some of the you know practitioners uh, especially of uh, you know uh, Indian revenue uh, services uh, servants in, 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 in Delhi. So, in this context uh, I am going to talk about uh, trade policies for sure and how why trade policies. Always the question comes to our mind then why trade policies uh, and or, or, or why facilitations. This is because of the fact that the present day's competitions are very different. It is no more perfect, no more near perfect. Competitions are very cutthroat kind and the byproduct of comp competition is resulting different products, differentiated product not different product. So, product within products. Even uh, you know the management guys, the faculties used to add you know even extra value additions to the product which we derive. Now, one of the important uh, contribution of China in this segment is that they attach huge value to, to the product especially in designing, designing by look, by packaging China is the number one in this segment. Then I mean how to make the buyers inspired to purchase your product. What kind of facilitation should be uh, given? What kind of export uh, you know subsidies might be given? So, that buyers will be actually int uh, very interested to purchase our product. So, therefore, differentiated product matters uh, while discussing facilitation. Then second one is market access. Market access is actually dependent on the country's policies country's restrictions. Now, as per the uh, norms of WTO, tariffs and non-tariffs, especially tariffs as a concretized you know restriction must have been reduced in almost all the uh, rounds of WTO, especially after the DDA round, Doha development round, there has been major discussion on this aspect to reduce uh, restrictions. <coughs> so, that market access by the member countries should have been much better. Uh, now, to facilitate trade, while we have you know uh, better market access, protection is also discussed. Yes, we can protect, but in a indirect channels. In formal protection or the nominal protection, the rate must have been very low as per the norm set by uh, WTO <coughs> as part as a member of uh, you know WTO. So, India has been a member since its inception. Uh, of WTO. Uh, so, earlier it was named as GATT, General Agreement on uh, Tariffs and Trade. Now, uh, you know from 1995 onwards it, the, this name was changed to WTO uh, and that year onwards China became the member. So, now protection and the effective protection is highly discussed in the present context when China gets the membership and many you know other forms of strategies are developed. So, therefore, facilitations uh, is important and uh, regionalism and multilateralism is important, groupism defining you know different type of qualities, uh, co you know coalition among the countries or cartel cartelization of the countries is, is, is making the product different 
by look, by price, by competitive advantage in various other senses. Especially uh, Gulf countries form the cartel in the you know uh, mid 70s or, or I mean the early 70s uh, you know uh, many countries especially US got the major threat after formation of uh, you know uh, OPEC countries. So, they catalyze uh, their, 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 their products uh, and they set standard of prices for their product as per the market demand. So, therefore, marginal origin and mercantilism, uh, multilateralism not mercantilism are very, very important while we are discussing trade facilitation. So, accordingly policies are framed. Now, as an anecdotal you know uh, example uh, or experience for your better understanding uh, dear students and uh, participants, uh, it is it is better to understand uh, the East Asian crisis. There are other uh, very recent uh, phenomena as well like you know uh, bubble crisis in 2007-8, uh, US bubble crisis and uh, there are many Zimbabwe crises. Mm, for uh, you know hyperinflation, some million percentage rise in inflation should also be, uh, be discussed while uh, understanding trade policies. Now, uh, if I just try to understand uh, you know the context of East Asian crisis to miracle. Now, I do not believe uh, you know especially Asian 5 countries, 5 economies namely Indonesia, M Malaysia, Philippines. South Korea and Thailand, these uh, five countries uh, actually form part of the biggest giant of uh, East Asian countries. And there have been major you know jump of their you know GDP and hence you know many trickle down effects of their GDP to other segments, uh, other sectors of the country uh, you know till the period uh, till the mid 1997. Even those growth rates are much higher than that of the OPEC countries. Now, this is a major blue, blueprint for many developing countries as a, uh, as a lesson to learn. Uh, the developing countries actually uh, learn uh, try to follow these blueprint. But one of the major concern uh, in the IMF discussion uh, is that that had led to uh, the, uh, the major change in you know uh, the growth rate uh, has actually led them to a crisis, to a major crisis. Uh, so, some form of reform in IMF uh, over the time uh, have, have, you know have, have been discussed for an effective global financial architecture. So, that this type of crisis should not actually occur. Now, even if the crisis was felt in 19, mid 1997, but these countries again could able to made it off in another 10 years by 20 you know uh, 25 or uh, 2005, uh, 6 these countries actually made themselves very stable, but in between there were actually major evidences of recession. I am coming uh, to each of the uh, discussion. Uh, so, there were not just the crisis uh, which has failed for their fall in their GDP, rather in terms of impacts noted for their currency and in terms of economic factors. So, suddenly uh, they reversed the foreign capital inflows <coughs> which actually fluid uh, which actually fueled their you know growth. So, they experienced nearly three you know, highest growth rate major growth rate uh, nearly three decades. So, so uh, you know, since there uh, there was no such you know major check, uh, those uh, uh, were actually turned into a crisis. Experience in 1997. So, uh, from 97 till uh, for another you know couple of years, there were ex uh, experience of recession. Now, controversies are there. Uh, are there whether the Asian economic growth miracle was actually fueled by uh, fueled by their you know total factor priority growth or by factor accumulation. So, there are two concepts total factor productivity growth 
or accumulation, whether they have accumulated their you know, uh, quality factors uh, which has actually made them stable or the, just the total factorial growth uh, uh, which has contributed. And it is an option that TFE actually mat, um, you know, matter a lot for their growth for the accumulation was not so robust or, or, or sustainable. Now, this crisis actually has uh, had has had you know a contagion effect. Contagion effect uh, to other many countries. Uh, so, many dependent countries to these Asian countries are also affected and so there are therefore, there were uh, cases of global financial you know crisis during the phase. So, therefore, intervention is required intervention by the you know uh, global institutions which are specifically meant for controlling these uh, crisis are very very important. So, institutional framework or new financial architecture is always there to uh, you know they are they are, uh, I mean uh, they are for some institutional mechanism must have been uh, they are always to combat this kind of you know possibilities. And uh, since you know there have been you know cross checks uh, on the way of any growth a uh, sustainability can be expected. So, spillover of these negative externalities can be reduced. So, therefore, uh, institutional uh, you know mechanism is required or the policies are required. So, the, I mean East Asian crisis uh, has been considered as one of the best lesson best lesson for for the you know institutional mechanism uh, to develop. Uh, or to reform the institutional mechanism so that you know countries will be growing in a sustainable manner uh, so far as international trade is concerned. So, policies must be very sustainable. What were the plausible explanation of, of this you know uh, miracle uh, or the miracle to the burst, burst which were experienced after some years. It has been observed that you know likewise in recent phenomenon uh, over demand of the realty sector in, in, in US. Uh, so, uh, it is considered the bubble of the real, real, reality, uh, realty sector actually turned into uh, bust because of over finance to that sector. So, which could not able to you know convert to its potential demand in the market. So, therefore, uh, the you know there were other uh, you know crisis stem from the crisis of the bubble. Similarly, in this case where uh, where it was experienced that there were some cases of rational self fulfilling panic and accordingly some models and theories are developed. So, which emphasizes head behavior uh, of the investors they convert into illiquidity and in uh, so due to insolvency in the system there are similarly cases of moral hazard observed moral hazard basically you know your uh, you know uh, the morality of the investors is hazardous you your your pattern of expectation in other forms is actually creating a threat to another one so <clears throat> so that continuously creating a threat to other competitors and uh, you know eventually lead to a higher form of crisis so risk is attached so therefore the bubble which was just created due to some forms of deceleration in, 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 in the growth pattern that has led to a bust in the East Asian. So, that was all therefore called East Asian crisis. Uh, so, some you know, in some you know uh, article some experts says that it is not miracle it was just a mirage. Uh, developing economies aiming for a rapid takeoff like the South Asian countries should actually adopt export oriented policies which was practiced by Asian 5 economies that is that was in fact one of the best uh, you know approach. But export oriented po policies should not be negated by by any form of you know uh, countervailing uh, percentages supported by the countries against the WTO norm. Th those Asian 5 countries virtually uh, you know uh, experienced quadrupled uh, result especially from the year 1970 to 1995 uh, though the crisis was observed in the mid 1997 
the growth rate which they uh, you know experience on the average uh, uh, was nearly 7 percent which is much more double than that of OECD countries. OECD countries stands for the uh, you know developed countries, topmost developed countries in the world. This is the group, group for the topmost develop, uh, developed countries in the world as per the World Bank definition. Organization of uh, exp, uh, you know uh, economic cooperation and development uh, countries, they form the group. And uh, when they experience this type of 7 percent on the average over such a period you know 70 to 95 which is in fact rare, uh, rarely observed. Now though India is following this track right now, but our uh, you know uh, we also experience this rate uh, quite you know, co you know quite a decade uh, from now, uh, I mean before now. Now since uh, you know, obviously we will expect many trickle down effects as well. Even the present government, if you look at uh, the present uh, Modi's government, where we their proposition largely confined around, confined around, uh, you know, big push through infrastructure, and they also emphasize trickle down theory, where they they they, they their in contention is is to emphasize the sectors that will grow, and it will trickle down to the poorest section of the society. So trickle down effect. Uh, matters and it was observed in, in, in those years as well. So, the, the first trickle down was observed in terms of life expectancy increased nearly 20 percent, adult literacy uh, you know increased by nearly 25 percent in this duration which is the, the best across the globe. Now, simultaneously it will it also corroborated to the fact that poverty reduced uh, you know amongst the bottom 20 percent population and uh, which was uh, uh, especially the re reduction among those was of 200 percent fall in the in the you know poverty during that phase. So, the trickle down effect actually helped the country to grow in a sustainable manner, but since you know uh, they uh, there was no such you know countervailing policies or checks by the international bodies could not able to sustain those rates. Vis a vis the strategies obtained by other countries. Now, this is what I have said uh, the structure of our uh, you know uh, whole uh, content, a whole content uh, structured into I have already discussed in the previous to previous lecture, uh, where I say strategic policy, uh, trade policy is very important, which are derived from imperfect competition in the trade and intra industry trade. So, IO actually industrial organization is one of the part where con, uh, the, f the, the, the uh, units of production or the farms can able to develop strategies, develop games to obtain highest benefits. They will retaliate and to maximize their best benefit out of it. Similarly, other strategies are through un, uh, you know multilateralism or uh, regionalism. Now, uh, so this is what we said. So policies are actually conceptualized accordingly. Uh, once again, I have to uh, you know explain these things since I didn't emphasize in my first lecture on this. What kind of restrictions are there so far as uh, faction facilitation is concerned for Indian uh, you know products to be exported, or there should be you know Indian uh, you know business in India uh, Indian soil. Government, present government have been you know has been repeatedly emphasizing startup India, stand up India in you know many a times in their many you know policy documents. So, do we think this has been actually you know uh, contributed hugely? What is your view? I okay, uh, I think uh, you know there are mixed views so far, mixed views. You know, these these are very you know various instrument uh, or uh, obtained by by a government. Uh, maybe for a long run, going to be uh, contributing much in a much better way than that of what we are experiencing. So therefore, we should not just negating the steps. Now, some of the facts we suggest uh, we collected from the uh, Doing Business uh, uh, website. Uh, till uh, 2015, latest uh, are actually uh, there, but uh, you know not authenticated. 
correctly. So, therefore, I am emphasizing on 2014. So, so far as uh, burdensome import procedures are concerned, there are various procedures to import product, many documentations to be done. I will talk about in my you know, succeeding slides where how many uh, you know, documents are required to export as well as import. So, among the score, uh, import you know, procedures are very complicated. It is it's, it's, it's very huge actually. And similarly, tariffs, uh, tariffs are also among, uh, among very high and corruption at the border uh, while you know misplacing documents or unnecessarily you know uh, by, by, by the you know uh, agents of, of for trade they also create some mispractices. Now, similarly uh, high cost and delay. Uh, caused by domestic transportation, uh, also delayed by international transportation is also a matter of concern. Domestic technical requirements and standards are also uh, very, very important. Uh, besides that, these are not all, I mean uh, besides that crime and theft uh, have not yet been also checked correctly. This has, should have been actually uh, you know uh, minimized or neutralized to near about 0 percentage could have been much better for countries uh, development. Inappropriate telecommunication uh, infrastructure which connects the parties for trade and I also try to uh, check with uh, you know South Asian countries and OECD countries which we explain. Once again I am saying documents to import, number of documents India required to import is 11, whereas the South Asian countries uh, 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 required to you know import is as against India it is 10. Now, try to try to uh, understand how, what kind of hassles are there uh, for importing a, a, a product which we are actually using for re-exporting. If our import itself is problematic, uh, we may not able to add value on right time. So, in this context uh, OECD countries look at uh, their, uh, their, their, their I mean uh, try to understand OECD and uh, their hassles especially uh, for uh, import documentation, it is only 4 documents are required. Uh, they do not require so many documents. So, they make their importing very open. OECD countries I told you they are the high income uh, groups, countries uh, which are having high in, in, income as per the uh, World Bank standards. Similarly, time to import, uh, the days required to import, look at if any consignment is ready, 20 days are required for India to be received by another recipient being in India. So, look at the products and, and, and which kind of products we are importing and how this should be 20 days, but it, in this front you know India is better than that of the South Asian countries. On the average, on the average South Asian countries among all South Asian countries 34 days, that means there are some South Asian countries where the number of days are much more than that 34. Whereas, uh, for uh, OECD countries the requirement is only 10, so they are much lesser. To check the cost of import, especially transportation is one of the most important cost per container in US dollar term, ours is lesser than that of the South Asian countries. Though South Asian countries are developed in, in many sense, but we have, in a uh, have landed in a better path to catch up to those levels. Uh, of course, our rate is uh, higher than that of the OECD one, but still we are competitive in this segment. So, therefore, uh, <coughs> uh, we need to understand the facilitation carefully. Now, here I wanted to say that always our uh, you know competition, our products, our destinations are, 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 are very you know uh, visible in front of us. Some of are vis not visible, but opportunities are there, I wanted to say opportunities are there. What we do? Opportunities are always attached with risk, so we need to bear the risk strategically and manage the risk. How we can manage it? Uh, because you know risks are not just one, it is not linear, there are non-linearity in the risk attached. So, since non-linearity uh, is the pattern of risk, it is very, very difficult to bear the challenges. Uh, so, therefore, there are many risks, risks may be in terms of because of our mechanization of you know trade, trade is more or less uh, becoming highly mechanized, 
if you are emphasizing service trade, but if you labor oriented then uh, so there will be possibility of uh, absorption of labor. But if, but if <coughs> trade is actually contributing or uh, having you know ha having connected to job loss or uh, uh, you know our import or the export include those you know uh, units are actually include uh, high end technologies, but India is a labor intensive country. Uh, uh, we have you know our uh, uh, labor uh, uh, you know uh, we have more labor abundance as compared to many countries in the world. So, and that too it is very cheaper as well, so, but if you do not absorb labor it is a bigger concern. So, therefore, we need to talk about job loss very seriously this is one of the very important aspect. So, we need to think about, <coughs> so not just importing uh, I mean some of the segment which is import, but that will replace our domestic you know production. Uh, therefore, it replace our uh, you know employment which is a major concern. And the products if it is, it is not you know controlling diseases, disease related issues India you know uh, in this segment health segment also it, it, it is attached to many risk. Crime related similarly natural uh, disasters in, in, in uh, you know many parts of India uh, you know our places are attached to natural risk, many evidences are there. So, such type of trade must have been done uh, for future, so that you know uh, our trade must be connected in a holistic manner and it controls uh, or contribute to the environment sustainably. Similarly, financial crisis uh, because many of the bubbles uh, so far observed is related to financial crisis. So, let us think a while on it, think very carefully how to connect each other, how what type of product must be actually imported, uh, what type of exported, so that our pattern must be all connected to each other and to minimize in all the segment all kind of crisis must be minimized. So, therefore, what do you do uh, when we have multiplicity of risk attached to our uh, trade? So, domestically as well as when we open our border, uh, border it might create you know further risk. Uh, so, therefore, uh, we need to take support, support, strategize the support, sharing risk may minimize our burdens. So, to whom we should share? Generally, when person is in trouble, family make it a broader family, your family is not domestically defined, it is now a global family and community not just a family I mean not just a um, family surrounded by few people make it a community instead of family. And you, you know enrich your enterprises, government, international community, banks or blah blah organizations as well, uh, so that the risk can be shared. So, therefore, we talk about institutions role of institutions maybe bank, police, uh, uh, you know industries and simultaneously thinking about you know environmental you know uh, sustainability of it. So, trade policy is actually covering all those aspects uh, simultaneously thinking about all directions of 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 uh, you know uh, control. So, that it will not uh, be uh, creating any threat. So, India's trade policy the recent or the latest trade policy is actually 15, 20, 19, uh, 20, 15 and 20 uh, poly, uh, foreign trade policy uh, documents are, 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 are coined in every 5 years. So, which, which actually is related to exports and imports which are regulated by foreign trade policy notified by central government in ex exercise of powers conferred by section 5 of India's foreign trade act 1992. It is yet guided by foreign India's foreign trade act under section 5 which guys export imports and other policy related issues guided by central government. So, presently as I already said it is the latest one is 1520 now the mid, mid, mid term review of this policy document has already been published mid term review recently probably mid term review of the this 
1520 FTP has been published. The document is available freely in the website. And uh, this policy was effective uh, or has been effective since 1st April 2015. Okay. So, so, therefore, as I already told you how to export is very important. We require uh, various steps. Uh, these are all available in the slide. You can follow my slides uh, to understand and all those details will be explained uh, while we will be landing on uh, you know, export procedures. So, we have establishing organizations, opening bank account, uh, we should have permanent uh, account, uh, permanent account number, PAN number, similarly other uh, um, you know IEC number, membership certificate and broadly sampling, pricing, negotiation, covering this, these are available in India trade portal website. There are uh, you know, uh, proce proce procedures are actually 12, it is clearly written these 12 has to be followed to export. Now, processing and export order it has to be in this order only. You, start, you have to start with to export your product, you have to start with confirmation of your order uh, with another party, procurement of go goods, then you have to follow in this order only. So, as per the FTP 20, uh, 15, uh, 1520, all export contracts and invoices shall be denominated either in freely convertible currency of Indian, Indian rupees. So, far as mercantile trades are concerned. Or our current account, uh, you know, units are concerned. Export proceeds should be realized in freely convertible currency, except for export to Iran. While we are exporting Iran, we need not convert it to rupees. In all other, we are supposed to convert it to rupees. Export proceeds should be realized in nine months. Nine months, it should not be actually exceeding that. That is a strict binding regulation. So documentation. Uh, three broad documentation as per the 2015 uh, 20 is concerned bill of landing usually those you know export houses they you know are guided by this commercial invoice come packaging list shipping bill or bill of and this is also called bill of entry must have been there these three are mandatory documents for import and export other documents like certificate of origin inspection of certificate may be required as per the case when uh, when essential. Similarly, submission of documents to banks, these are the you know bill of exchange as I told you, bank require these documents uh, for approving you or giving certificate. So, FTP 2015 uh, will carry forward this section, especially you know FTP policies when we uh, take off uh, the FTP segment in, in our later, seg later part of our discussion where we will talk about some exemptions, you know, uh, trade facilitations, ease of doing business as for the government of India document. Especially most important part is dealing with the dis disputes, we will take it forward in detail. I have already discussed there are 28, uh, you know, agreements, uh, but beside that we have the present agreements uh, which are in uh, presently running APTA, ASEAN, PTA, uh, some, uh, you know, SICA. Uh, SIPA, these are actually going to be discussed in detail in the uh, you know trade trade block trade block chapter. We will discuss in detail. I will carry forward all those things uh, in detail. 18 uh, currently running. With this, I think uh, I have to stop here. We will uh, you know continue in our next class with you know background to classical theory and why theory emerged. Uh, which are the context by which theory are actually discussed. Thank you so much.